Hello, and welcome back to the Pokemon Legends Arceus uh, All Loras tutorial series. Today we're going to be covering the Obsidian Fieldlands. Um, this is, I think, one of the longest areas in the game, mainly because it's uh, just so tutorial heavy, and um, a lot of it's on foot. That's the main reason. Um, but yeah, I've already watched the cutscene when you first enter the Fieldlands camp after the trial, um, so you'll get a cutscene here. You just gotta say yes to everything. Then from here, uh, you just want to start catching some Bidoofs. Um, actually, no, I'm thinking of the wrong day, excuse me. So this is the day where you have to watch four rival cutscenes. You have to watch the cutscene right here. You have to watch the cutscene a little bit farther in front of you. You have to watch the cutscene uh, all the way by the Bweasels. And then you have to watch the cutscene in the middle of the three trees out in the field. I'll show you where all those are. Um, but you're actually going to run past the Bidoofs on this day. Um, because you actually want your party filled with one Wurmple and one Starly. Um, just so you have enough points to leave. Because if you catch just the Bidoofs um, with this route, you don't have... It's kind of risky and you may not have enough points to leave. So I have my first empty party slot filled with a Starly. And I'm going to try to get it filled with a Wurmple as well. Okay, cool. Wurmple's got. Very good. Now my party's full, so it doesn't really matter what I catch now. This is the third of the four rival cutscenes that you're mandated to watch. And then running over here to the final cutscene. I'm looking around for Wurmples. I actually only got one spawn in that early part, which is kind of kind of unfortunate. And then only two spawns total. You can get up to like four here. I only got two. And typically when you're doing the apricorn tree breaking, tumblestone ore harvesting, you want to wait until the Pokemon comes back to you to initiate any kind of cutscene. Um, because EXP is not awarded until you see the EXP bar in the top left corner. So if you send something out to break down a tree and you get a couple apricorns, um, but you you know walk into a cutscene, you have those apricorns, that's great. Um, but you don't have those uh that EXP from breaking the tree. Which doesn't matter that long later in the run, but it matters a lot here. Then you're gonna warp back to camp and walk up this ledge uh, in this way. Um it's pretty simple. Just kind of do a little zigzag pattern. And then we're gonna try to catch two more shinks. Um, doesn't matter where they come from. Uh, you don't actually need to today. It just would really help. It's probably going to see me. Yeah. All right. At least that one got in. Uh, when the Pokemon are sitting like this, they're actually like more prone to being caught. Um, but yeah, I had an issue with that. I still got it at least. All right. And after you're done with these Shinxes, you're going to run up this little ledge. Harvest some Apricorns. And then if you see us, uh, if you see a Silcoon here, um, you want to go for the Silcoon first before the Wurmple, because um, you can run around Silcoon and strike it in the back. But if you do anything to Wurmple, like try to throw a Pokeball at it, Silcoon's going to get upset. So you want to deal with Silcoon first because Wurmple is not aggressive. Silcoon will avenge Wurmple. Wurmple will not do such a thing. And there could also be Pichu right here. Um, best thing to do is just feed a berry and backstrike it. If you happen to catch it, that's great. If not, I mean, I, I would still go for a catch. If you get two... Um, Pichu's here. Throw one berry to like kind of separate them, or I guess you could feed them both. Um, but make sure they're both caught unspotted with backstrikes if possible, because that can actually finish Pichu and get to rank 10 with the full 200 points. It's insane. Alright, and then here, 
All right, so this is uh, one of the hardest parts of the early game, and I recommend practicing this. What you're going to do is you're going to bait these butterflies to get angry. Like this. Oh, geez. I don't know if that's my video or if that's the player I'm using. Let me see. This little animation right here where it's getting angry. It will be stuck in this for a few seconds. So you have time to run behind it and hit it in the back with Cyndaquil. This is going to be how you handle all these butterflies. Because when you hit something in the back, you always go first. And that's what makes us able to deal with these butterflies that are level 18 plus. And you're basically just going to kill three of these. Uh, I actually have a really, really, really slow Cyndaquil, as you can see here. After I use my first Ember, um, butterfly is going to get two turns. What you want to do is you want to use your Ember and you want to start like slowly walking out of range. But don't go too far. You just want to get far enough out of range for the battle to end. This is the safety strat. Um, it will preserve Beautifly's HP, but it'll let you get another backstrike on it to initiate the battle with uh, going first again. But you don't want to go too far, because if you go too far, the Beautifly's health will be fully restored. So we're going to do it again. Uh, now it's actually just fully angry, and it's not going to have that baited moment again. So now you're going to wait for it to use an attack and then do the same thing. I uh, ignore this other one. This one's going to do this attack. Then it is like stuck like this for a few moments and you have plenty of time to get hit with it. Yeah, hit it in the back with Cyndaquil. And then yeah, Beautiful is gonna get two turns in a row, that's fine. Dunspore is actually wonderful. You may think this sucks and you may want to just leave and do the backstrike again. That's perfectly valid. But seeing Stun Spore get used is a double point task on Beautifly. If you see this, you can skip the next two, uh, the next rollout on the next two fights. Because we'll need to kill the next one with one Ember and one rollout because um, Beautifly has a task for being killed with a rock type move. But if you see Stun Spore, you don't have to do any rollouts. I'm still going to go for rollouts on the other ones just to demonstrate. Yeah, this one didn't get a aggro on me, so I'm waiting for it to attack. I'm going to run behind it and hit it in the back. You definitely just want to practice this because you can do this on any Pokemon. Any Pokemon can be attack baited and then hit in the back. All right, roll out again. Rollout is 90%, so that's why seeing Stun Spore and having, being able to skip those rollouts is really good. Uh, I didn't really mention it, but instead of Rollout, you'll be using Ember again if uh, you do see Stun If you do see Stun Spore. Now, when you're in like a crowd like this, it's very important to make sure the other ones don't get angry at you. Because after we kill this Beautifly, we want to warp. But if you're still targeted, you won't be able to warp. Like I was, I was targeted still. So wait for yourself to get untargeted and warp back to camp. And then we're going to evolve everything in our party. Everything.
Now, depending on what this Wurmple turns into, um, if mine tur turned into a Silcoon, for example, uh, if you want to go ahead and evolve that into Beautifly, just to get some Beautifly experience out of the way, uh, it's perfectly fine. Um, because you will need to catch two Beautifly's later in Cobalt Coastlands uh, in order to capitalize on that research we just did. Um, but obviously, you know, if you want to only have to deal with catching one, you can go ahead and just evolve your Silcoon. That's not really a big deal. Beautifly has a pretty poor catch rate, so it's definitely advised. Um, you know, if you're having trouble with it, definitely consider it. Then look through your research and make sure you got everything you need. Um, and that research in particular, you're going to be mainly looking to see if you have a heavy Bidoof. Um, because heavy Bidoof is going to be required for finishing Bidoof's research in this route. You're just going to warp back to the Galaxy Hall, go in, talk to Selene, and turn in your research. All right, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit since this is all cutscenes. All right, now uh, Rival's going to ask you to uh, battle her, him, whichever you pick. Uh, you're just going to press minus X up up A to go to the training grounds. And then you want to be leading Quilava. And then if you're not level 18 here, uh, you will need to use Strong Ember because you don't have Flame Wheel yet. But Flame Wheel is a guaranteed kill. Strong Ember, I believe, is an 11 out of 16 range. Yeah, and I, you're not supposed to get outsped by Pikachu in this fight. I just have an extremely slow Cyndaquil. I mean, you can get outsped at level 17 pretty easily, but at 18, you have to be like trash speed to get outsped. And uh, that is what I got here in this run. All right, so there's some more cutscenes here. Then you're just gonna go back to the front gate and go back to the field lands. Then there's another cutscene with Volo. And then now we finally get to catch more Bidoofs. Uh, you're just going to catch the three Bidoofs in front of you. Hopefully you get a heavy. Um, you want to be paying attention to up here on the screen. Let me make sure. Yeah, up here on the screen, um, because it'll point out the tasks that you have. And uh, it won't show you if you get two different genders, uh, two different forms of a Pokemon, but it'll show you pretty much any other tasks that you do. So while you're catching things, if you see one out of one heavy specimens popped up here, just, just cut, try to keep, try to peek up here every time it shows you something. Try to make a habit of that. Like that. There it is. Heavy specimens caught. And you can sneak up on these starlies. It doesn't really matter a ton. Because they've already snuck up on the starly in the trial. But it doesn't hurt to do it again, just in case you don't get uh, two different forms. And then if you uh, if you didn't get two Shinxes yesterday, um, caught uh, after warping back to camp after the rival cutscenes, this is where your backup Shinx is. You need to have three Shinxes total. The one you caught on the trial, and then two more. So if you only caught one after the trial, that is your backup Shinx. Do not be afraid to stun it if you have a split apricorn if it breaks out. Um, it, it's very worth your time to have a Shinx there. Or to get three Shinxes before getting to this point. A little bit more cutscenes. Uh, you want to make sure you're leaving Luxio for this fight. Um, Luxio's research will get finished uh, based on the amount of moves we're using. We're going to need to use three bites and three Thunderfangs. We're going to be using our first two bites and a Thunder Fang in this fight against Munchlax. The order is very important um, because it doesn't truly matter which one you do um, between Bite and Thunder Fang because they both do the speed lowering. 
but you want to do bites. You want to do your two bites before Thunderfang because paralysis is really, really, really slow. Um, Munchlax it won't really affect how often Munchlax gets to go, and it'll just make things a lot slower. So bite, bite, Thunderfang. Easy. Uh, Thunderfang is only 95% accurate, so if you miss it, just go for it again. You know, it's just unfortunate. Nothing you can do about it. All right, a little bit more cutscenes here. All right, now here, uh, we're going to be doing Cricketot. This first Cricketot, just catch it with extreme prejudice. Just, just run into it. If it gets scared, that's great. Because uh, when Pokemon get scared like this, the next thing it's going to do is it's going to turn around and run. And when it turns around, you can throw the ball and get a backstrike on it. Or any skittish Pokemon will do this, like Krikatot. So you can kind of like predict their behavior, like, uh, you know, scare them and then know they're going to turn around and then time the ball to hit them in the back. But it's still a backstrike. Yeah, they're in a heightened state and they may not have it as great of a catch rate, um, but it shouldn't be too terrible. And then for these other two Krikatots that we need, because we need to catch three, and I got to break out, unfortunately. I'll need to catch more later. Uh, you're going to feed two, and then catch them unspotted. And if all of them got in after this, you're done. But I had to break out, like I said. I'm looking for Starlies over here. don't see any. And I had another breakout. So I will need to catch two Starlies and or two Krikatots and one of them unspotted later to make up for that. And then for Geodude, you just want to make sure you're uh, hidden. Um, you can kind of hide behind this rock and toss the ball like this over it. Um, just be careful because sometimes I can see you anyway. Now, this ore is shaking. It will always be a Geodude in this area. And more often than not, you're going to need to see a Geodude pop out of an ore uh, to finish Geodude. And while you're on foot, this is the best time to do it. So I recommend definitely throwing something out there um, to see a Geodude pop out. You don't have to do anything with it. Simply just seeing it pop out of the ore is a task. And if you weren't able to get three or two Geodudes today, that's fine. There's another spot to get Geodudes uh, later on we're going to go for. And there's also this one up here, if you um, are so inclined. All right, make sure you're leaving Quilava and head up here to Mai. And some more cutscenes. And then we have the Alpha Cricketune. Just run up to it. And here you're going to be doing uh, Agile Ember, um, so you can get two moves in a row. There is a chance you go first. If that is the case, then you can just do regular Ember if you want to. And then you're just going to use Ember again. Now, if you used um, Strong Ember on Pikachu... Um... You're going to be at three embers after this fight. And then if you just use a fourth ember on Paris coming up, um, that'll complete um, another ember task. Otherwise, if you use flame wheel and then two embers, you can use a flame wheel on Paris to complete the next flame wheel task. It doesn't matter too much, but, you know, just uh, look at the research and the link in the description. Just kind of play around with the calculator, the research calculator, and just see what you're comfortable with. There's nothing wrong with using um, the research calculator in the middle of the run. If you're unsure about what you need to do to finish something. All right, looks like we got some heavy Bidoofs, which is good. We're definitely pacing to get out of here at 1800 or more. And then here, uh, we're finally going to withdraw those Pokeballs that we put away before the trial. 
because you have the deposit box in your room. You're gonna open the box, press uh, X on the Pokeballs to put them in your bag, and then go. Uh, more cutscenes here. You're gonna run up to the uh, commander's office. Watch more cutscenes. Then we're gonna run down. Um, the optimal way to do this, I don't think it's that hard. Um, run down, run diagonally here, dive, dive, circle, and then just run right in. Uh, you can go for this crouch cancel at the end. I went for it just force of habit, um, but don't feel pressured. Crouch canceling only saves like one second if done absolutely perfectly every single time. Uh, it's not worth, you know, losing your mind over, especially when you're starting out. A little bit more cutscenes. Oh, okay. So, um, very important to note after this cutscene's over, right now, you are not able to warp. If you open the map and press X, it's going to do nothing. The game requires that you run out this door and watch this bag in cutscene. Now you can warp. Then you're just going to go to front gate. There's another Volo cutscene. And then we're going to go out the gate and we're going to go to the Heights camp. Very, very, very important that you select the Heights camp here. If you mess up, you can just open the menu and warp to the Heights camp, but it, it saves a, a significant amount of time. All right. And then we're just going to go. Uh, generally, I believe it's faster to dive up hills. I don't know for sure, but that is the general consensus amongst players. Uh, don't feel pressured about how you just want to descend here. As long as you kind of run off the slope. Um, when I'm running off this, I'm always looking to land on this little texture right here. This little face. Um, because that, you know, you won't take any damage from this height and uh, it'll help you descend. And if you, you know, want to be stylish, you can try to like land for a moment and continue onward. But just be careful because uh, you could die. But just, you know, just be careful. Play around with it and see what works for you. But it's not too precise is what I'm trying to say. You want to be farming these ores because we'll need them for the next area. And then Paris here. Uh, we're going to use our Quilava to attack Paris. Uh, use Ember or Flame Wheel, whatever you want. Right, look over there for Pichu. There's a Cricketune. All right, I got Pichu. This is the spot where there could be either Pikachu or Pichu. If you got a Pichu on the first day uh, before the Vita flies, if you get a second one here, you can finish Pichu, like I said, if you just have two Pichus. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate feeding it and catching it. I don't remember whether it got in first try or not. Yeah, I just, uh, I ran after it. All right, cool. That's still about 50 points. Definitely nothing to scoff at. And I figured I would go ahead and, uh, go for a unspotted worm, uh, Krikatot here. Cause like I said, yesterday I had two breakouts and one of them was the unspotted one. So I'm going to go ahead and do this unspotted catch to try to get back on track with that. And I didn't catch it, unfortunately, so I'll have to catch it tomorrow. Or in Crimson Mirelands, because there are some Krikatot spawns in Crimson Mirelands. That Bidoof looked kind of chunky, so I was going to catch it. Oh, plus I didn't have six. You need six Bidoofs. Okay. Uh, there's not much uh, to worry about for this. You just want to mainly be uh, following the path and try not to divert too much. Because at least here, while you're still on foot, every detour you make just kind of adds up. You want to just mainly stay the course. So here, um, I like to dive and get around right here. Get right here. And then over here, there's going to be one or two uh, Psyduck slash Baneary. And then over... Well, I guess I'll do these evolutions first. So with Wurmples and their evolutions, we have Wurmple and we have Silcoon. 
Um, hold on. Let me let me see if I can pull up the ranger to demonstrate this. Okay. Okay, so this is Ranger. This is the link I have in the description for you to use for uh, calculating your research. Let's compare Silcoon and Cascoon. Silcoon and Cascoon. The only difference between them when it comes to catching, evolving, evolving, catching, is whether they are caught during the day or caught at night. So if you cat if you get two silcoons through evolving wormples, which uh, actually evolving into a silcoon counts as an evolution for silcoon for some reason, this action is wormple evolving into silcoon. You're gonna catch them during the daytime because we never do obsidian fieldlands at night. So two silcoons coming from wormples is done. However, Cascoon's not so lucky. Cascoon requires all three of your Wurmples to be uh, Silcoon, or to be Cascoons to finish it. Or you can evolve your Cascoon into Dustox a little bit later. Uh, not right now, but just keep in mind, if you get two Silcoons from the Wurmples total, you're done with Silcoon, and that's great. If you get two Cascoons from uh, the Wurmple, you'll need to evolve your other Cascoon later. Um, but that's basically the difference is that one of them gets the daylight modifier and the other one doesn't. And that's why Silcoon's generally easier to complete than Cascoon. I don't remember what I got. Yeah, I got two uh, Silcoons and one Cascoon. So I will show you in the next video when you uh, evolve this Cascoon. It'll be right pretty much right after you leave this area for the last time. Because there is a um, forced night segment whenever you're being given the tutorial on wisps, uh, spirit team wisps. At that point, you should evolve your Cascoon because um, that'll give Dust Talks the nighttime modifier. And then over here, um, somewhere between in this range, there's going to be also a Benaria and a Psyduck. So I didn't see anything here when I threw this berry over here, but I know that there is something over there. You could slightly faintly hear something perk up and go to the berry. Uh, audio cues are going to be very, very, very important for you. So I do recommend playing this game with headphones if possible. Uh, I personally use, um, well, pretty much any monitor will have like a headphone jack for you to be able to plug into. Um, but I personally use, uh, a ground loop capacitor from mpal just so i don't get any like buzz buzzing in my ears um but yeah i definitely recommend playing with headphones so basically here you're going to want to feed um four binaries and three psyducks they won't both want a bat berry for some reason i'm trying to separate them by throwing the berry in a range where binary can smell it but psyduck can't I'm having difficulties. Yeah, because I don't know why Psyduck wanted that one. But I don't know why Veneery wanted that one, so whatever. <laughs> they they're they're doing their own thing, and that's fine. They both got fed, I don't care how. Alright, so Psyduck has been fed four times, actually, I think here. Maybe it's only three. Yeah, so if you decide to feed Veneery three times instead of four, you'll need to catch three Veneeries. Uh, all of this is detailed in the notes, by the way, that I linked in the description. Uh, if you're, you know, not following uh, this number, that number, this number, that number, it's all listed in there. Um, but if you do feed four, you can catch one. Uh, but otherwise, you have to catch three. And then Psyduck will be feed three, catch three. And then we're also going to kill one with Luxio Thunderfang. Uh, it's kind of like... Yeah, I missed that ball. Very unfortunate. So I think I got took damage here. Yeah, because I didn't hit Psyduck in the back, I didn't go first, and it did a lot of damage to Luxio. My Luxio has to be pretty slow to get outsped by Psyduck, I'm pretty sure. But don't worry, there's more spawns of uh, Benarian Psyduck over here, and uh, one more cluster upcoming. 
And if you don't get three Psyducks in this area, that's fine. Psyduck is in pretty much every area for the remainder of the game. Uh, Baneri is the one that you're never going to see again, at least until research is over. Because Baneris do appear in Alabaster Icelands, but by then it's too late. <laughs> All right, that's Baneri's fourth feed, so now I can only catch one and get away with it. Very good. I think that might only be my second Psyduck. Yeah, so I'll need to catch one more Psyduck later, ideally. But we've got a whole other day here, so it's really not that bad. I'm going to go ahead and heal Luxio, um, because we need to use Luxio for this fight, and I don't want him losing. <laughs> You're going to be fighting Leon's Gumi. And uh, once again, like I said, make sure you're leading Luxio. And we're actually going to be, we're going to be finishing up those moves that I said we're going to be using. We're going to be using three bites and three Thunderfangs. We used two bites and a Thunderfang on Munchlax. We used another Thunderfang on um, Psyduck. And now we're using Bite Thunderfang on Gumi. So that is all the moves we need to see for Luxio. And Luxio is actually fully complete now. If you wanted to, you could you could just deposit Luxio. It doesn't matter. There's some more cutscenes. And you're just going to warp back to camp. And then just walk towards the professor. All right, check your research. If you have more than 1800 right here, um, you can already rank up. So after a few more cutscenes in the professor's lab, um, the professor's office that you're watching this cutscene in is literally right next to Celine. So just head left and go and talk to Celine and rank up. And then warp to the front gate. Then there's a long cutscene about getting weirdier. And then from here, I'm going to uh, go to this guy and I'm going to withdraw whatever geodudes I have. Uh, two, um, namely, actually. I'm going to withdraw two geodudes if I have two geodudes. I'll withdraw only one if I only have one. Um, but it's okay to only withdraw one. You want to, even if you only have one geodude, you should leave an empty space because we're about to go catch geodude right now. If you go over this little red ledge and come down here. There are more Geodudes, and you can sit on this ledge in camp and uh, kind of pick your spots against Geodude, and it just started fogging. Fog is a 3% weather condition that's going to heavily nerf my accuracy, which is awesome. But yeah, now my party is filled with two Geodudes, which is good. Because um, Geodude is catch three, see one pop out of an ore, and evolve two. And then after those two are evolved, you'll just see you'll just need to see Gravelar pop out of an ore at some point. But there comes a point in the game where every ore is going to be Graveler. And you want to catch Paris also. Try not to skill issue this, just run behind them and throw a ball, like I said. Uh, I'm going to have to stay here. I didn't get either of those Parises, that sucks. Yeah, I actually also didn't get another um, Cricket Hot. Oh no, yes I did. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so I had two cricket thoughts to make up and I did make them up. That's good. And now is your chance to clean up any uh, missed catches that you had yesterday. Like I had a missed side up catch, so I'm making that up right now, or I'm trying to anyway. Make sure you're farming trees and ores and stuff. And then you want to be leading uh, Quilava here. And uh, yeah, it's fogging for me, so it's really, really, really bad. Uh, I guess I'm just going to spam uh, Flame Wheel. If you've done at least two embers, you'll be fine just using Flame Wheel. Double flame wheel on this fight. The point is, you just have to have used at least two embers to finish Quilava's research. 
And then the other moves have to be either more embers or more um, flamies. And then luckily I got a burn, and then Glaceon just kind of done its did itself in with a burn. And then from here, oh my gosh, I forgot to mention, um, back when we evolved Bidoof, it was very important that Bidoof was evolved exactly at level 15. Um, because at level 15, Bidoof has three moves. And then upon evolution, it learns Water Pulse. However, BDF at level 16 learns Rest. So if you don't evolve BDF at exactly level 15, it's going to fill its fourth move slot with Rest. So it's very important that you evolve BDF at exactly level 15. Now we've got a couple more cutscenes. And then Cleavor. Cleavor, uh, he does a little bit of a pattern. Uh, dash, spin, dash, spin, dash, spin. He's going to start with dash. You want to kind of meander your way over to this spot that I'm in. It's going to line him up to uh, be in a good spot uh, for later. I'll explain why. Um, but yeah, you're going to dive out of the way. And um, basically, the reason why this spot is so good is because um, Cleavor is really, really, really close to this rock. Um, so after he's done with his dash attack or a spin attack, we're going to try to come over here and get between him and this rock. Um, because when he does his dash, he like brings his scythe downwards and he hits the wall before he hits you. So basically just cancels out his dash attack. You'll see what I mean whenever I do it. So for the spin attack, you just want to slowly back out of uh, the range. But you don't want to be too far away from him. Uh, before he initiates it, because if you're too far away, he'll do another dash and not spin. So you want to be kind of close, wait for him to start spin, and then back away. And then now, like I said, we're going to get uh, between him and the wall. And he hit the wall instead of us. And then when he does this little shout, all of the all of the lords do this. Whenever they do this shout, they are invulnerable. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing some bombs up in the air just to get hitboxes out there so that whenever he's done shouting, he will take the, the bombs on the head. Like that. Because if I had thrown them at him, he would have not taken damage from them because he was invulnerable. So I kind of timed the bombs to come down on him after he was done being invulnerable. Yeah, I kind of messed up the strategy a little bit here, but it should still work here. After this spin cycle. Yeah, after his little alpha shot, he's going to move a little bit quicker. It should still work here. Cool. And that's Cleaver. And uh, we get some more cutscenes here. Then you're going to warp back to camp. Uh, if you still need to evolve a, one of your Cascoons that are, um, well, actually, uh, if you still have a Cascoon to evolve, I would avoid um, menuing here. You can menu, um, I'll show you where, where to menu in the next video. But if you still need to evolve a Cascoon, don't do this menu here. You want to just withdraw Shinx. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Um, if you enjoyed this content, uh, be sure to leave a like, subscribe. And uh, I will see you guys for the next part, Crimson Mirelands. See you guys later.